Amen. Tonight we're just going to share a real short message called, Where Did You Get That? Um, two weeks ago, I was um, able to minister at a church in Delaware, Pastor Jerome Lewis's church, Seeds of Greatness. And I shared a message, um, uh, what was it called? Hmm, remember what it was, B? The title of that message? Anyway, something. But we talked about some of these similar things. And as I was studying for today, I felt like this is kind of like a part two. So I'm going to give you a quick intro, and then we're going to jump into this. Our opening text is 2 Peter chapter 1. So if you have your devices or your actual Bible, let's flip there. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to to life and godliness, Sue was praying that at prep rally tonight, Um, as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the power, for the, through the knowledge, excuse me, of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. In the Amplified Bible it says, may God's grace, his favor, and peace, listen to this definition of peace, perfect well-being, all necessary good, all spiritual prosperity and freedom from fears and agitating passions and moral conflicts be multiplied to you in the full, personal, precise, and correct knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. For his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness through the full, personal knowledge of him who called us by and to his own glory and excellence. This passage says, All things have been bestowed upon us or given to us that are required. It says requisite and suited, are required, are necessary, are essential for life and godliness. So the question we're asking tonight is where did you get that? Number one, if it's life and godliness, it's from God. Amen? James 1.7 says, every good gift and every perfect, free, large, full gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of all. In Ephesians 1.3 it says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So we've just read now three different passages, three different authors, Peter, James, and Ephesians was written by Paul. They have all have said that every spiritual blessing... And all blessings have been given to us for life and godliness. So when did we get all these things? Does anybody know? You can shout it out. Not you. You can't shout it. (laughs) Anybody else? When we got saved. Yeah, when we got saved. So the moment that we made Jesus Christ the Lord of our lives, the moment that our spirit was recreated and the Holy Spirit came to live on the inside of us. How many of you know that when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit doesn't move in? When you start speaking in tongues, that he moved in the moment that you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. The Holy Spirit now created your spirit. You became brand new. Maybe not things on the outside. Maybe not some things that we think about in our mind. But our spirit was recreated in the image of and the likeness of God. We became brand new when we got born again. The Holy Spirit came to live with us. And when he came and he moved in, he brought some stuff with him. How many of you ever had some people come stay at your house? Anybody? They normally bring a bag or two, right? We just had our niece stay over, and the first time she came, she brought nothing. No toothbrush, no pajamas. So the second time she stayed over this weekend, I said, please bring a toothbrush with you. Please bring a little bit of a bag so when you get up in the morning, you can brush your teeth. But most people, when they go stay somewhere, they bring some baggage with them, right? No? Yes, okay. Well, the Holy Spirit moved in the moment we got saved, and he brought his baggage with, a, with him. When he moved in, he brought life and godliness. Do you all have your suitcases with you this, this evening? All right. Now, it's nothing that we can see, obviously, because we'd all be walking around you know, through life with these bags, right? But as soon as he moved in, life and godliness moved right in alongside it. And what I love about the Holy Spirit's baggage is that it's easy and that it's light. Amen? So we get saved. We get This baggage, we get a ticket to heaven as well. The moment we get saved, boom, we're on our way to heaven. We take our last breath. We know where we're going to spend eternity. But we get these two cases. And in the godliness case are all of those things that we need to be like him. Amen? And in our life case are all of those things that he's called us to 
and that we need to live this life here on earth and to live the God kind of life. Knowing that God has already provided all of these things, life and godliness, it, it changes the way that we see God and it changes our relationship with him. When we come into services, I don't know if you, if you notice or not, but we change a lot of words to the songs that the artists write. We love their melodies, we just don't always like their theology. Because we're not going to come into this place and sing, come Holy Spirit. Why would we not sing, come Holy Spirit? Because the moment that we got saved, he moved in and he brought life and he brought godliness. Why wouldn't we sing, we want more power? Because when he moved in, we got life and we got godliness. We have all the power we're ever going to need the moment we got saved. Amen? Why don't we say more? We need more of your love because we got all of his love the moment we got saved. Everything that pertains to life and godliness, we got it. Now, why don't we look like Jesus the moment we got saved? Because we got to do something with it. We just have the baggage, right? We haven't opened up the cases to see what's inside. We haven't put on the clothes that God gave us. We haven't learned how to speak differently and act differently. Situations come up in our lives, and we kind of respond the way that we used to respond, right? Maybe we could be a little irritable before Christ. How many of you have ever been irritable after making Jesus the Lord of your life? Okay. How many of you have ever been a little mean after making Jesus the Lord of your life? Anybody ever be, be a little grumpy? How is that possible? Because you have life and godliness, and you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. How is it possible that we can show anything but life and godliness? Because we're three parts, spirit, soul, and body. And so the moment we got saved, our bodies didn't change. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, that would be nice. Our bodies didn't change. And the moment we got saved, our minds didn't change. Sometimes when people get saved, they have a miraculous salvation. And something that they were addicted to just falls right off. And those, those are like the great testimonies that we love to hear uh, and we love to celebrate with people. But for the most of us, we get saved and now we have to, what does the Bible say? Work out our own salvation. We have to start becoming more and more like God. And how do we do that? As we open up these cases and find out what's inside. And we open up the cases by opening up the word of God, spending time with him. You guys know that. You know, get into the word, see who God says that you are, and you begin to walk and act like he does. But I love about when we know that we have it, and we're not asking him for anything more, we come in to worship, and we can actually worship. We don't have to beg him for anything. We don't have to plead. We can just praise. We can simply just say, Lord, all I want is for you to be glorified. I'm not asking you to do anything else for me. I'm not asking for more love. I'm not asking for more joy. I'm not asking for more peace. I'm simply coming into your presence and saying, God, be glorified. Be lifted up because you've given me everything that I need. Now, we have to be very careful to remember that this isn't referring to everything physical, right? Life and godliness, these are spiritual things. These are, um, when it says, I've given you everything for life, your life, your spiritual life and godliness. He doesn't give us, in this case, when he moves into heart, all the money we're ever going to need for the rest of our lives. How many of you think that would be cool? We get saved tonight in church. And, and if this was true, y'all be getting saved again tonight in church. <laughs> when you get saved and you go home and the room is stacked with money. All the money you're ever going to need for the rest of your life. All the cars you're ever going to drive or in your driveway. All the homes you're ever going to move to or all be. No, we don't get all of those things for life. But we get all of the things we need to live the God kind of life on the inside of us. So that when we, we connect with God, when we worship God, it can be simply about him. Saying, God, I don't need anything more. You've done it all. I thank you that you do meet uh, my physical needs. You do need, meet my financial needs. You do give me wisdom. But he's given us these cases to look inside and to find his plan. When we do things his way, he provides. There's that saying you've heard a million times, where God guides, he provides. So if we open up our life case and there's something that he, he's leading us to, he will always, always, always provide. If what we need, what we think we need is not in the case, chances are, we probably don't need it, right? Yeah. So the life case, um, the godliness case, according to Colossians 3, you can look that up if you want. But it has all of these things that the godliness case um, 
has inside. Basically, it's all the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, Galatians 5.22 says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You ever hear someone say, I have no self-control? Yes, you do. All the self-control you need is on the inside of you. We just have to exercise it. We just have to let it reign and rule our lives. The other night, uh, I was looking in the refrigerator for a snack, and I had cherries in there. And I had this meal plan that says if you have 17 cherries before bed, it helps belly with belly fat and <laughs> helps you sleep a little bit more. So I'm looking at the cherries, and then I'm looking at cookies. Cherries, cookies, cherries, cookies, cherries, cookies, and cookies wins it. I mean, but that was not the best decision. I could have exercised some self-control, but I chose not to at that moment exercise self-control and decide to eat the cookies. So we have to exercise. We have to open up the cases. We have to put on these things. We have to make a decision. God's not coming down and slapping those cookies out of my hand and say, you're not going to eat those cookies. Eat the cherries instead. We have choices that we make in life, right? And when we determine whether or not we're going to put on the clothes that are in this case or we're going to just kind of do what we want, what tastes good, what feels good, what looks good, right? The life case contains those things that he's called us to and those things that he's blessed us with. So inside the life case, there's things like the name of Jesus. Did you know that he's given you the name of Jesus? The Bible says at the name of Jesus, demons will flee. If you're in a situation and there's like a demon that manifests somewhere, you have the name of Jesus. In, he's given it to you in your life case. Whether you feel like a super faith giant or not, whether you've been reading your Bible or not, if you walk into a situation, the Holy Spirit is dwelling on the inside of you and you can say in the name of Jesus, demon, go. And it can go. You know, in, in this life case, there's health and there's healing for your physical body. In, in this life case, there's the Holy Spirit as he lives in you. He brought him with you. But he's your comforter. He's your helper. He's your teacher. In this life case is the word of God that we can hold on to, that we can stand on. The Bible says his word will not return void. So if he gives you a scripture, he will be faithful to see it completed in your life. No, no matter how dark the situation may seem, no matter how far from the target you might be walking, his word will never return void. He will always accomplish what he set it out to do. That's very important to understand that. What he sent his word out to do, not what we twist it and try to make it say, but what he sent his word out to accomplish, it will not return void. It will not go back to him unfulfilled. Amen? So what, uh, where did you get that? Number one, if it's life and godliness, it's from God. Number two, if it's heavy if it's against the word of God or it's just not good, it's not from God. You hear me? CFF, do you hear me? If it is heavy and it is against the word of God and it is not good, it is not from God. I don't care if it turns you into a minister, the trials that you had and the sickness and the disease that you endured, that sickness and disease was not God. You will never find in your life or your godliness case sickness, disease, debt, turmoil, stress, strife, none of those things are in the case. If it's heavy, if it's against the word of God, if it's not good, it's not from God. And we can look at that scripture. Well, he'll turn everything around for good. Yeah, but he didn't make the bad happen in the first place. He's just that good that in the midst of a mess that way maybe you put yourself in or maybe the enemy has stirred up. Or you know what? We don't live in heaven. We live in a fallen world. So whatever it is, whatever situation, he can say, you know what? You got yourself in a mess. The enemy's throwing some stuff at you, whatever it may be. But I'm so good that in the midst of your mess, I can come and pull you out of it and turn it around for good. But our God does not do anything, send anything that is not good. I hear people all the time, oh, well, you know, I don't know what God's doing with this situation. I heard some, someone say um, this, this past weekend, they were telling me about a sickness that they have, and I don't know what God's doing through all this. I said, I'll tell you what he's doing through all this. First of all, he didn't give you the cancer in the first place. 
No way, no how, never would God give you cancer. He can't. He died to bear the stripes of cancer, so it wasn't from him. And what he's doing through this is he's going to hold your hand as you walk through it. He's never going to leave you, and he's never going to forsake you. That's what he's going to do, but he's not going to be bringing all of these things. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Message Bible puts it this way. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Excuse me. Watch how I do it. I love this right here. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. The Holy Spirit moved in the moment we got saved and he gave us these bags which are light and easy. So if you feel heavy, if you feel burdened, if you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders, don't feel condemned tonight, but recognize that you're carrying some stuff that's not from God. Okay? And I brought some stuff that, that we might be carrying around with us. This is filthy. This is love. Impurity. These are some of the things that are found in Colossians 3 that represent the old man. Meanness, bad temper. These are heavy bags. They're not like the lighter ones. There's one more back here that we already kind of talked about. Irritability. This is a good one. Let's look at the irritability case. Whew. And I need a couple people who would like to volunteer to put on some irritability tonight. Anybody interested? Please. All right. Robin. There you go. Anybody else? I got a bunch of them. Connie. All right. Jose. Thank you. This one's heavy. <laughs> that was a heavy one. Here, here you go, the heavy one. Oh. Now it's a little warm in here. How many? How you guys feel? Feel good? <laughs> now, what happens when we start to put on the things of the world and the old way of life, the way that we used to act is we can have our peace clothes on. This is my peace shirt on, and it's really light and airy because it's kind of hot in here. And it's, I'm not really sweaty, but when I put on now the ways of the world, the old man, it starts to cover up the lighter clothes, right? It starts to cover up the peace and the love and the joy and those things that are found in our life case. And, and after a while, you guys are going to start to get really hot and sweaty in these jackets, right? And you guys, they feel a little heavy. Do you feel lighter than when you put it on or you feel heavier? <laughs> heavier, yeah. Have you ever in life, you just... You feel like, man, things, I can't get a breakthrough, man. I can't catch a break everywhere I turn around. I'm just hitting a wall after hitting a wall. It's possible that you've gone into the wrong case and put on some wrong clothes. Maybe clothes somebody else gave you. Well, man, everybody else is doing it. Maybe I'll, I'll give that a try. And it just doesn't fit right. Or, or, you know, just we just start reverting back to how we used to be. How many of you women, we just sometimes can just start running our mouths and, you know, we don't want to. You know, we want to speak lovely and we want to be nice. But just sometimes it feels, come on, be honest. Sometimes it feels good just to talk about somebody and just, ugh, when no one is going to know about it but the one person you're talking to you think. You know, and you start to put on that old, old way of life. But what happens after a while? What starts to happen on the inside? It feels yucky. You feel like, man, oh, You leave that situation. Maybe you're at a party and they were talking about something. You just leave it like, oh. Man, oh, I don't feel light. I feel like I feel heavy. I feel ugh. Man, I just feel yucky. So maybe you put on some of these clothes, and, and um, all you have to do is take them off. You don't have to go go get saved again. You don't have to go and do what is 
in the Catholic Church, Hail Marys and rosaries and things like whatever on the beads and stuff. You don't have to do those things. You just simply have to say, man, God, I'm sorry. I, take this thing and go ahead and take it off. You can just leave it there. Drop it. Just drop it. Drop it. And then just move on. And when you drop it, look. Look at Jose. Don't you look? You just look so much cooler. You guys just look lighter. Your clothes are all flowy and nice. And now we can see the love and the joy. But sometimes we put on these old things and we cover them up. And then we can't see the peace and the joy and the love of God. So even though we have peace, it's not visible. We can't see it. Now don't get me wrong. The moment we get saved, because we have these two cases, life's not perfect. How many of you have had a perfect life the moment you got saved? No. We still are going to face things, but we're not facing them in our own strength anymore. Amen? We're still going to have storms. You know, our house isn't the only house that the rain does not fall on. It falls on the whole neighborhood, and there's this little cloud, sunshine cloud, over our house, and our house doesn't get any rain, just everyone else's house. No, there's still storms. We still live in this life. But he is our shelter. Amen? We still may have to walk through the fire, but just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we can walk through the fire and never even smell like smoke. So we're going to go through things in our life, but he's with us now, and there's a change and there's a difference. So take an assessment of your life when you're going through different things and there's different decisions to make. Go find out what's in your life case. Find out what God's called you to. Okay, if things are just super heavy and you feel like you're dragging this baggage all around, chances are you stepped out of God's plan and you kind of did something on your own. But you know what? Sometimes the enemy's bags look really nice. And you have to ask yourself, constantly be asking yourself, where did this come from? Because this bag here, this is the meanness bag. It has this gift inside. That looks really nice. Right? It's really nice. And so we reason in and of ourselves, well, that had to come from God. I mean, it's so pretty, and it's sparkly, and it's pink, and pink's my favorite color. Not, not my favorite color. I'm just using an example. <laughs> Miss Robin, it's your favorite color. So this must be from my daddy God because it's just so pretty. But if you didn't find it in your life case, don't open it. So many times, in, you know, maybe even in a relationship, you go looking in somebody else's bags, and, ooh, I found one. Ooh, this is so pretty. And we take it back, and we try to fit it in our life case, but it just it doesn't fit. And all it brings with it is heartache and, and troubles and problems. So in your life, go to your life case and find what God has for you. Everything in your life case fits you perfectly. Everything in your life case was custom made by the creator with his label on it for you. If it's not in here, it's just not going to be right. And the only way to find out what's in here is to spend time with him. And when you spend time with him, you, you get like this internal radar. And so I want to give you a couple ways to find out where did you get that from. You know, like if you have something, where did you get that? Did you get that from your life case? Did you get it from God or did you get it from somewhere else? Because I think, you know, sometimes we give the devil a little bit too much credit. There's just things that we make, this, we want what we want when we want it. And we don't care if it's in a life case or not. We want what we want and we're going to go after it. And then we blame it on the devil later. But there's some, there's some ways to, find, to determine where did I get this? Did I get this from God or did I get it from somewhere else? And there's this thing Miss Lynn always talks about, the red light, green light. If you get a red light and you don't feel peace, stop. Make sure, go back to your life case, make sure that this is from God. If you're feeling this green light and you feel peace, go for it. Go ahead and do it. The other way is that, again, something feels heavy. It's not from God. Now, that doesn't mean our life is just going to be like, oh, everything's easy. I don't ever have to work now that I got saved. You know, we still have to work. The Bible says if a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat, right? We still have to work, but it shouldn't be heavy. It shouldn't be this burden. We watched a show last night. Have you seen the Tiny Houses show on HGTV? And they made a comment. They said, we want to work less and live more. And it sounds good, right? 
work less, live more. That sounds like a good concept. So they're building these really tiny houses like the size of this box here. <laughs> they can't even move inside. But I thought we were talking, and I was like, how sad is that? That when they're working, they're not living. You know what I mean? Like work less and live more. So when you're working, you're not living? then they're not, and we were saying, man, they're not doing what God's called them to do because when you're working and you're doing what God's called you to do, you're living, man. Like, you don't even sometimes know the difference between am I working, am I not working? Am I the clock or not on the clock? Because I'm just having such a great time doing what God's called me to do that I don't even know. Is this on the clock, off the clock? I don't even know. It's just I'm enjoying the life that God created for me. So if things are heavy, it's not from God. If it's against the word of God, guess what? It's not from God. We, uh, we do the premarital counseling, and we have not done maybe in the past five years, maybe two weddings, three weddings, that the people haven't been living together before marriage. And what is so surprising to me is that they're, I don't want people to feel condemned or judged, of course, but they don't even know that living together before marriage is not in your life case. Did you know that? It's for all of us. It doesn't have to be specific just to me. All, every single one of us in the world, in our life case, is not to move in with your boyfriend or your girlfriend before you get married. That is not in your life case. That is not God's plan and God's best for your life. That's not what he created. He created marriage to be when a husband and wife come together. He created sex and all of those things and intimacy inside of marriage. He did not create any of those things outside of marriage. We have so much divorce. We have so much turmoil. We have so much craziness going on in the world because people are doing things opposite of the way that God designed. And they were like, man, why is everything so hard? Why is my life so hard? Why, why don't I know if this is the one or not? Because you're wearing sexual immorality over top of your Holy Ghost meter. You're not sure whether they're the one or not because you can't hear because you're cloaked and you're burdened down with doing things not God's way. And I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm trying to help set you free tonight. When you do things God's way, there's freedom and it's light and it's easy. So to tell the difference, where did this come from if it's Life and godliness, if it's from God, if it's heavy, if it's against the word of God, or it's not good, it's not from God. So to question, you know, oh my gosh, this, I just got a call from the doctor, and, and, and they just said that they found something in my body. Do you think, you, you know, is, this is from God? No, that's not from God. How, would, how can you fight the enemy, and how can you combat what the enemy does or what's in the world if you believe that God gave you something? It's impossible, right? So what I want you to do is, as you think about the things of God, as you read the Bible over the next few weeks, kind of determine, if as you go through your day, if you start to feel things and make decisions, stop and ask yourself, is this in my life case? Is this, is this in the godliness case? Before you respond to somebody in anger, before you do what you used to do and maybe curse somebody out at work, wait a minute, say, Whoa, wait a minute. Did I find any of those things in my godliness case? Let's see. Let's see what's in my godliness case. Is that loving? No. Is that kind? No. Is, am I quick to forgive an offense? Am I content with second place? Am I humble and showing humility? Am I even-tempered? Am I disciplined? Am I, do I have quiet strength? All of these things are in our godliness case. So stop and look, stop and think. Before you make a decision, stop and pray and say, God, what's in my life case? What do you have for me? Does it line up with your word? Because every time that you make a decision that's based on the word of God and that you're led by the spirit of God, you will have great success.